Hello everyone. The Bible is divided into two sections known as the Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament consists of 27 books which include the four Gospels, the Epistles, the Acts of the Apostles and Revelation. The Gospels tell us the story of Jesus' life, death and resurrection which is central to our faith and salvation. The first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, are called the Synoptic Gospels because they essentially narrate many of the same stories and parables but slightly in different form and words, whereas John is quite independent and distinct. The transfiguration of Jesus on a mountain is one of such events recounted in all the Synoptic Gospels. Peter one of the disciples who witnessed the event also talks about it in his second letter to the early Christians. Another disciple, John, also briefly alludes to the event in his Gospel. Friends, the whole event is quite a difficult one for many of us to understand because what happened on the mountain on that day was something very special and personal to Jesus and a spiritual awakening for his disciples. What is the story about? Jesus went up to a mountain to pray, as he so often did. Why did Jesus prefer to go up to a mountain to pray? Have you ever had a spiritual mountaintop experience? A mountain is an area of land that is very high above the land around Hence, naturally, those who are on a mountain top leave behind noise, crowds, situations and the daily cares of life. From the high point, we can get a bird's eye view of our world. We are able to see further and wider. We can see the world differently than we do when we are at the foot of the mountain. Yes. A little time spent on a mountain top in silence and solitude can change our whole perspective on life. It can affect every aspect of our life. It can influence all of our choices. We can recognize our connection and oneness with the cosmos and its creator. We can feel the presence of God. When we are on top of a mountain, we no longer see things from our own perspective but from God's. When we come back down to earth, the world may not have changed, but how we see the world and others will change. Our Lord Jesus had his share of mountaintop moments as well. Throughout the Bible, we see that mountains hold a special place. For example, Abraham took his son Isaac to offer him as a sacrifice on Mount Moriah. Later on the same mount, King Solomon built a temple for God. God spoke to Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. God spoke to Prophet Elijah in the gentle whisper of a breeze on Mount Horeb, which some say is also known as Mount Sinai. Mountains also played an important part in Jesus' life. Following his baptism, Jesus was tempted on a mountain. He preached atop mountains near the Sea of Galilee. He frequently visited the Mount Olives to pray. So this time Jesus invited Peter, James and John to go with him and they went up to a mountain away from the crowds and there Jesus began to pray. Luke does not tell us what exactly Jesus prayed about but we can guess from the rest of the story that it must have been about the decision he knew he had to make very soon, the decision to go to Jerusalem and face his suffering and death. Jesus had told his disciples only a few days earlier that he would be rejected by the elders and chief priests and teachers of the law and be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. So, Jesus was surely praying about these things and about what it meant for him and his followers. While praying, his face began to shine and all around him a bright light radiated. 
and in the midst of that light two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared, and they spoke to him. Luke tells us that they spoke to Jesus about all that was to happen to him in Jerusalem, and that the disciples, who as usual were nodding off, were merely awake to see Jesus in this glorious moment. Some time after, the disciples were fully awake, Moses and Elijah departed from the scene. Friends, after Moses and Elijah had left, the disciples tried to prolong the special moment they had witnessed by suggesting to Jesus that they should build three shelters, one for Jesus, one for Elijah and one for Moses. They perhaps felt Jesus, who was often tired because of his travels and work, was in need of rest, encouragement and support. No sooner than Moses and Elijah had departed, the light of glory began to fade, a cloud swept over them, bringing back with it the ordinary world that we all know so well, the world of doubt and fear. At that moment they had a voice from the cloud saying to them, This is my son whom I have chosen, listen to him. Friends, for Jesus it was an intense spiritual experience. It was a time in which he was confirmed in his mission and was encouraged to continue in the confidence that God was with him and that Moses, Elijah and all the prophets were beside him in all his joys and sorrows. It was a moment that God gave to him to strengthen him in his own suffering and death. For the disciples who witnessed the glorious moment, it was a spiritual awakening. They were to listen to Jesus even if suffering is part of the plan to complete God's mission. Certainly, the disciples' experience on the mountain strengthened their faith in Jesus Christ and gave them the courage to follow Jesus all the way to the shameful suffering and death in Jerusalem and then experience the glory of his resurrection. Friends, this great event is meant to encourage us in our life of discipleship just as it did the disciples. First, it teaches us that suffering is an essential, inseparable part of our faith. Like Jesus and his disciples, we must suffer first in order to find glory later. Second, we may never understand pain and suffering if we remain only in the world in which we live, which is noisy and full of sin and strife. But if we go to the mountain top, which is the temple or church today, we will be led by the Spirit of God to grasp the higher purpose God has in mind for our suffering. Particularly for us Catholics, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist is the highest point from which we can see more deeply and clearly into the roots of our own suffering and the realities of the world. When we are on the vantage point, the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, it is crucial that we stay awake and be watchful from beginning to end. Let us remember, when we celebrate Holy Mass, it is not just us or others in the worship we can see, but also we can see and speak to our Lord Jesus Christ. Third, we all make decisions, big and small, every day. We are led to make choices between right and wrong, good and evil, pleasing and not pleasing, life and death. These choices will determine our commitment to God. And we know it is so hard for us to commit ourselves to God's plan. Hence, it is important that just like Jesus, we pray first and share our burden of choice with our God. At those moments, it is also essential that we refer to what the teachers of the divine law, the prophets, our Lord Jesus Christ and his apostles say about those things, so that our decision will be also a pleasing one to our God. 4. 
when we make a decision to follow God's way and His law, let us not look back because God's plan is always the best, even if it brings with it pain and suffering. God's plans are always designed to bring us good. God will never lead us to do anything that is contrary to His word. It may be painful for the moment, but in the end, it will turn out for God's glory and for our own good. Amen. God bless you.